everyone, it's Kate. Welcome back to my channel. It is planner setup day today. We are going to be setting up my 2022 planners. I've got all kinds of plans for these, if you will, um, and all kinds of things set up for them. Over to the side here, I have whole stacks of um, stickers and various things that are going to go in each of these. So let's jump in. There are three showing here. We actually have five to do total. So this may end up being a two part video, but we'll see. I'm not going to make you sit through the entire setup of all of them, but I am going to show you what I'm doing in each of them and um, maybe speed through parts of it so you can see part of the setup. So let's get started. We're going to start with my B6 planner here. This is the um, TPC Nation Penny Pages uh, Hybrid Planner. Um, and we are going to do a complete setup of this one, including making a custom cover for it, which if you saw my December planner setup video, we're gonna do something similar. So here's what we're gonna do. I have these new covers. These are um, frosted covers that I got from a shop on Etsy. I will link her down below. She was kind enough to make them in these custom sizes for me to fit this planner and an A5 wide as well. So I'm super grateful for that. Uh, these are similar to ones you might have seen. I think Live Love Posh does them for the happy planner sizes, but I was having trouble finding them for um, other sizes. So super glad that this uh, lovely shop owner was willing to do that for me. They arrived um, at the uh, mid-December maybe ish. So we're gonna take parts of this planner here and um, create a custom planner. This is a four-month planner, right? It actually it's four months plus two sections of notes. Um, so she be thick. Uh, I am not gonna keep all four months on the discs at one time. Probably just a month because I don't. It's I don't like having. Um, a planner that's this thick plus then add in stickers it's never going to all fit on the the discs so we're going to create a new cover we're going to choose discs that match from my stash and then we're going to put together the planner that I want to have for my hybrid which is TPC Nation planner weekly and then the be productive daily pages from the penny pages all right so the first thing we're going to do is create our cover so what i did in december i'll link that video or i'll try to remember but if you didn't see it let me find my memory keeper whoops we made a custom diy cover i did this with clear planner covers that I had made um, with 10 mil laminate, these ones here, um, but then the frosted covers arrived, so I did replace them with that. And what I did was some DIY foiled vellum with a scrapbook paper um, patterned cover so that all together it created this cute look here. So we're going to do something similar. I'm planning to do uh, this kind of setup each month in my daily planner. I did not create vellum for this month because I hadn't yet decided on an actual pattern um, and wasn't sure exactly what I would want. So I decided to go simple and just leave it. We're just going to do the inside pattern here. I had also planned to find maybe like a sweater pattern, like a white or cream sweater pattern um, for my January cover, but I couldn't find one that I liked. I find January kind of a difficult month to find like seasonal stuff for. It's either all still, like if you search for winter patterns, it's all still Christmas related. Um, and there isn't really anything that's just, there isn't much that's just winter. So this is the paper pad that I used in December. There are a few things, a few sheets in here that I think could work for winter, um, or th that I did think when I first flipped through it. So I'm going to have another flip through here and just see, I'm just going to pull out, I have pulled out a bunch of sheets to use for Christmas wrapping. Um, so, you know, even this one I think would be okay-ish, like green is all right. I could just do the green or I can leave in the, the 
snowflakes. I mean, I know they're meant to be ornaments, but we could just pretend they're snowflakes. Um, I think there's another one. So there's that one, which could work as well. I don't really want to do pink this month. That's definitely too risky. to see. There is this one, which is very, very simple. That's too Christmassy for me for January. Same. If that didn't have the ornaments, I think it would be okay. That's cute, but again, pink, I don't really want to do. I thought there was one other that I thought would work. There's this one too, which I could just do a white cover. I'm gonna pull this one out actually. Just set it aside. Okay, I'm gonna pull this. And what was the other one? Was it just this one? I think that's still too, that looks more like Christmas to me than winter still. I think that was it. Okay. I was really struggling with this when I was looking through the sheets earlier and then I, or a couple weeks ago even, and then I realized it's only for one month. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one of each. One can be the front, one can be the back cover, and I will just decide which one I want that to be once they're cut. So I somewhere have the instructions for the measurements for this. I'm going to grab my paper trimmer. And I think so if I do this one, I want this to be the top. So I need to cut it at seven. Let's turn it this way. So just, it should be just under seven inches, I think is what, like I think I said, in my instructions, I wrote one notch under seven. So whatever that is, because I think in my, I mentioned in that video too, I am Canadian and we work in centimeters. And so this whole thing is just like inches. I don't know what one notch under that is. Tell me in the comments. <laughs> and then we want it to be five and a quarter inches wide and I don't think it matters to me like where I cut it it would be sort of here unless I want to trim off a bit so that the snowflake is kind of going off the edge which might be cute and then we'll cut five and a quarter from there and a quarter and that would be the cover which isn't it's not terrible because then it'll be punched for the discs I'm kind of off to one side here because of where my paper trimmer has to go all right so that's one we're gonna leave that we're gonna do the same thing with this one sorry if you can hear that racket that is my dog playing with a huge bone that we got her for Oh, wait, does it matter which way? It feels like this should be up. Um, we got her a giant bone for Christmas. Like she's a French, like a small French bulldog, small-ish. And um, this bone is literally like, did I just do this wrong? Yes, I should have done this one at five and a half. How big is that? too small okay um five and a quarter sorry uh yeah the bone is like almost as big as her but she thinks it's the greatest thing ever okay this one we're gonna do one notch under seven inches and these are our two covers so We are going to punch these, um, so I have to do one like this and one like this. Put away the paper trimmer, 
grab punch. This is a lavender punch, but I am considering getting a an arc punch. I think it's maybe a little bit more suited to what I want. We're going to just punch that. And then we have our two covers here. So we need some discs. Let me grab my stash. And by the way, there were more detailed instructions for doing this kind of thing in the December setup video. So if you want to see that, um, that's where I would recommend going. So, all right, these are all my middle discs. Well, most of them. Um, I think regardless of which one we choose, I think silver discs are gonna be the way to go for January. I am really excited to be able to do like monthly covers and setups with this and make it a little bit more seasonal without it being like seasonal on the outside without being seasonal on the inside, which I think is perfect. Okay, let's put these in like this and see what we think of them. So we can have that. That doesn't seem... Oh, I guess once we add tabs and stuff, they'll stick out. That one or that one. I'm going to go with this one for now. I kind of like it. But I'll let you guys know what I end up doing. All right. So we have our covers and our uh, frosted covers and our seasonal cover in here. Now I'm going to grab this planner and we're going to start adding stuff. So we will add in the front pages here. Now I have already um, half moved it. Well, not half. I've started using this planner. So I've moved in a little bit in this setup because I'm filming this on Wednesday and it's, um, like the middle of the first week of this planner. So there are certain things in here that I have already planned, um, but I have been waiting to do this setup video to truly, truly move in. So here we've got the monthly, which I haven't done yet, um, my weekly overview, my, um, weekly academic layout and then the dailies are here and we're going to add in the rest of this month it's a daily and a weekly if I attempt to put more than one full month in here it's probably not gonna work out all that well but what I will do is add in the tabs and the monthly for the rest of the months I don't fully intend to pre-plan tons in this planner I've got another one that I'm gonna pre-plan my months in but at least this way, it sort of looks a little bit more like put together in full. Plus, I'm going to, it's actually already adding quite a bit of bulk. <laughs> uh, I'm going to add in the notes sections. So let me grab those because they are on a different set of discs, I think. So in this planner, you get, I think it's tw 10 or 20 pages of lined and then same amount of grid. I don't know why I have 
Oh, because I have them for two planners. So these are formula planners. I bought two to start. Um, and I just grabbed the notes sections from each and put them here um, on these discs. So I'm going to grab that. Oh, I think what I actually intended to do was add in the two tabs to make this like January, February, March, April, May, June. So six months of monthlies on here. But I don't actually think that's going to work because May is actually at the top. Um, so let's just, I'm not going to be able to add in all 10 pages. I'm just going to grab four of each for now. And I may not even add this last. Oh, I'll add it anyway. Who knows what I might want to use different sections for and four of these. Now I may find that midway through the month it is already getting too bulky on the discs with stickers on every day in which case I may need to remove the months that I'm not using but that's okay because each month so you've got your cardboard divider plus then two sheets here so each month does still add a little bit of bulk on a set of small discs like this but we'll see how it goes so that can be put away this can be put away and here is what we have so far so our cute little cover the vellum page the sort of cover page of the planner then we move in here so let me find so I have a little packet of stickers here and we're going to start stickering this up. So the first thing we're going to do is add on, whoops, knocking things over, add on the monthly tab stickers. So these are actually left over from my Be Productive Daily from the uh, second half of 2021. Um, it's perfect because that was a six month planner, but I had 12 months of tabs, so I'm gonna use the leftover ones. It did come with new tabs, but I am going to, because I repurpose planners a lot, I'm gonna save those and just use these ones up first. Now, if I remember, these are a little bit wider than the tabs, so I'm just gonna grab my scissors and trim them just a bit on either side. So, oops, that is what we've got. We've got our tabs on, and then we're going to open to this page and figure something out for this. So I have this sheet here, which I got from Scribble Sticker Co. This is the Medi size, so the medium ones. Um, and I actually thought these might fit in the A5 wide. They don't, they're a lot smaller than that, but they're like a tiny bit bigger than the squares in this planner. But I think I can make it work by getting creative with a little bit of white out and just sort of you know, just we'll use the bottom as a guide and then we'll just sort of start the next ones where we need to. So what I think I'm going to do is start with this. So actually that one fits perfectly. So why do they not all? Oh, because some of them have, I think some of them have like six lines. That's why. So it's just a few months that have that. All right, if I mess it up, I have another sheet um, from the other planner that I can use. And I have another sheet of these too. So let's just start and see where we end up. This is a six 
So I wonder if I should try to line it up. We could just slice off the 31 and add it up there. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. So start a little sticker graveyard here. Okay, I think that's gonna work. I will go in afterwards and add in the October, September, add in the um, missing days from the months that we chopped them off of. This is just five. This is cute. So this I'm just going to use to like circle important days. I may add some kind of like legend for different colors. I haven't truly figured that out yet. I just like having a calendar like this at the start of the planner. And I really love that these ones have a Monday start. So this is one, two, three, four, five. This is another one we'll have to cut off. Um, yeah, Monday start is imperative for me because uh, the week starts on a Monday, so like the weekly view. So if they don't match, I'm just perpetually confused. So if you're using a B B6 Penny Pages planner um, and you are looking for little monthly calendar stickers, and she had Sunday start ones as well, um, and you don't mind doing a little bit of sticker surgery. These are a great option and I will link Scribble Sticker Co's shop down below as well. Okay, there we go. We have our yearly overview right there. Okay, that is super cute. I'm really happy with that. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is label this sheet here. I don't know yet what I'm gonna use these for, but there are 12, so we're gonna label them for the year, and hopefully I'll figure it out at some point. So I've got, these are from my shop. These are the neutral monthly headers. So I have, actually have two sets of um, these for this planner, because I'll show you what we're gonna do with them. Um, but I'm gonna start by using these to label the months. now. Oh, I knew they would stick in into this part of it. I forgot about the fact that they're probably too long for this. So maybe what we're going to do is just trim them down to just the abbreviations. I think that will work. So... We have, whoops, um, centered or, yeah, I think probably centered. And I will do it as close to the top as I can so we don't take too much of the box, but I'm fine with it sticking into it a little bit. We're going to use these same ones on the A5 wide version um, of the, oh, <laughs> didn't cut that one all that well. That's okay. It won't be super visible. Um, and those ones we won't have to cut down, I don't believe. February. Oh. Okay. Let's see. Hold on. Now we really are doing some sticker surgery. Let's just pull this off so I have a surface to work on. Uh, okay. <gasps> oh my God. What the heck? <laughs> okay, well. Wow. 
let's be very careful with this now. And this is sticker surgery to the max. All right, I'm still gonna use that. I hope I can get it off the sheet in one, oh, damn it. I'm determined to get this up in one piece. All right, you know what? It's not that bad, really. Okay, moving on. Next sheet. Let's, we're gonna try harder not to do that this time. We'll peel these up. This unicorn paper is so beautiful, but it is a little bit of a diva sometimes. I might use this sheet to list important dates or things like that. May, we don't have to trim it all, which is delightful. Thank you, May. June, I don't really need to trim, but in for the sake of being consistent. Let's do it anyway. Goodbye to our little E. June. Nope, next page. So that's what it looks like so far, which is super cute. Um, maybe I'll do the second half super quickly and then pop back. All right, you guys, I got to, uh, I was about to put down October when I suddenly realized that I was going to put it down here. And that made me wonder if I was doing the same on this. And I was. So I figured you guys were probably yelling at me and wondering when I was going to notice this, I thought about just finishing this page and then coming back on to point it out that I realized it, but I thought I will just come back now and see if we can fix this. So they haven't been stuck down long, so I should be able to use ooh, my little thing here. May can stay. At least it's not one of the ones, like not March, where I had to um, do so much surgery. <laughs> so let's fix this. So now we have, in the right order, January to December, and probably I'll use this just to list important dates and things like that. Okay, now, so I have all of these, um, 2022 stickers left over. I'm going to keep them because I have other uses for them, but I am going to set them off to the side for now. And now we're going to use another set of these to label each monthly tab here. So I only need January to April for these ones for now. And we don't have to cut anything down. I am not going to use the 2022 I don't think, I think that's what we're gonna do. And I am going to pop them just there. This is something that I never actually got around to doing in my um, B6 daily this year, like for 2021. And I wish I had because it just gives it like it's an undated planner, which is so versatile, but adding these things just gives it a little bit more of a completed look, I think. February. March. 
March and April, and then I will keep this sheet handy for when it's time to move into May, because like I said, this is a four month planner. All right, so we have cover and we have our year at a glance our second year at a glance slash important dates and then we move into the months the tabs are labeled and the month is labeled on here as well for all four months and I think that that looks super nice the last thing that we're gonna do is just date the daily pages for um, January. So I have already done that with um, the first week of the planner because it's this week and I'm using it already. I am using this sheet. This is S8 from my shop, um, which is just basic days and dots and you get enough for a month. So let me date these quickly and then I will be back. All right, I am back. I ran out of date dots after the, sorry, 26th because I started the month on December 27th. So I've gone into my little date dot graveyard here and I'm going to pull, they don't match um, the font and that's fine with me. It's for, um, what, five days and then I will be back on like I'll be able to start a new sheet of the date covers and have a full month there. So that is fine with me. So now we have all of our dates, um, our days dated as well. So we are good to go in this planner and we have our little daily, sorry, weekly slash daily hybrid planner set up and ready to be used. Okay, the next planner that we're gonna set up is my mostly DIY business planner. So if you saw my planner lineup video, you know that for sort of planning ahead and social media and sort of just scribbling things um, down to make notes and make sure that I am planning well ahead for my business, I am using um, almost completely DIY. Well, they're all printable inserts, um, but I've used them from several different shops to make this one planner. Um, I'm going to use another set of frosted covers for this planner. And for the cover itself, I have just made in really thick cardstock a cover with my logo on it and the year. Um, I was going to do you know, a whole pretty setup uh, for this one as well. But I think it really just needs to be simple. This planner is probably going to be open most of the time anyway, so I won't need anything super fancy. We do need to choose discs for this one as well. And I'm probably, I would have used these ones or maybe the slightly bigger version. They're slightly different color. Um, and I could, I did, I would just have to take them off the planners they're on. So right now, the larger ones are on this. Um, this was also, it was an oops planner that I bought and was trying it out for um, a different purpose. The smaller, gray ones are I have no idea where these ones are so I guess I'm not using those could do those why don't we do those for now although I do think they're going to need to be bigger that's going to be tight let's do these ones so these are from the same shop that I mentioned I think it's called Oh my goodness, what is the shop called? I just saw it yesterday. Planner Amour, maybe? Um, 
I'll link it. But, uh, but yeah, I really like these covers. They are a little bit thinner than I thought they were going to be, which is fine. Um, so I did, like, I use 110 pound cardstock for this cover, and it's actually printed on a. Uh, this bit is a sheet of unicorn paper that I printed as a sticker and then stuck it on and sort of cut it out to add even more strength to it. So what I'll probably do for the back is add another sheet of cardstock. Um, and I may end up just laminating something like this because I'll use, I'll probably use this cover all year long on this planner. Okay. The first thing that I have in here is um a yearly overview also starts on monday and then it's got sort of another one here so this again like i'm going to use it to highlight important dates for the business and then here i will actually write sort of what those dates are so it's just sort of an at a glance thing so 2022 overview right there then the next thing that I have is a set of just monthly um, layouts. These are from a Penny Pages printable that I printed just the monthly for um, and just like printed many copies of it. So these are going to be used as my like actual plan ahead like plan out my year for my business, um, which like it's December 29th as I'm filming this, should my 2022 planning have been done a long time ago? Yeah, probably. Um, but this year has been so crazy. And this is the first full year of my shop. Um, and it's been so crazy that I really have not had time between how busy the shop has been and also just a lot of things happening in our lives this year. I haven't had time. So I have some ideas and notes, but I have not figured out yet everything that's going to happen in um, 2022 for the shop. So that's going to go after this. These are monthlies. I'm going to show you in a second what I'm going to do with those. But first, I'm going to add in the last second to last section I think hold on yeah which is also so uh I didn't mention but these ones at the front here are from a shop called Kalani Designs um and I will link her down below these ones are as well so what this is is a set of month on one page with um grid underneath it. And what I am intending to use this for is YouTube planning. So I will, I've broken a nail, putting sheets on discs. That's impressive. Um, what I will do is jot down just what video I am planning for each day. And then down here, I'm intending to use it as a tracker. So, you know, the name of the video down here and then columns for filming, editing, thumbnail, upload, prepping, voiceover if needed, all of those things down here. Um, I had planned to just draw that in each month, but I actually think I'm going to create some kind of sticker for that. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So that's what I'm going to use these for. So I'm going to pop these in here. This is something that all of last year I had like monthly spreads for this purpose. And then this year, like I just dropped off of YouTube fairly early on because we were, first we were still recovering from COVID, then the shop got so, so busy so quickly um, and I just didn't have time to do YouTube um, and I hated it. So in, as part of my effort to get back into doing that regularly this year, I've added in these calendars here so that I can jot those down. So, the last thing, nope, second to last thing. Second to last thing. Let me look, I have some stickers for this too. Or do I? Yes, I do. Um, 
One thing I had intended to do before I filmed this video and time just got away from me was to create some dividers uh, with tabs at the top for these different sections. I have a set from last year and they are, they're still like, they're still usable. They're just scuffed as all heck. They look dirty and they're not, they're just totally scuffed up. This is just a laminate pouch that I laminated on its own and then cut out um, and punched. I pulled these out of my planner from 2020 um, and pulled the labels off because they weren't the right ones anymore. Um, intending just to reuse these and then it got like all sticky residue which I could get off but they do look super scuffed. I don't even know if you can tell how scuffed they look. Um, so I had intended to make new ones before this video. I just didn't have time but essentially what will happen is one will go here for the yearly overview. One is gonna go here, which is gonna be in whatever current month we're in for my shop. One will go here for YouTube. And then the last one, there are four in the set. The last one is going to go here and I'm going to pop a whole bunch of notes pages behind this tab. And these are going to be for two things. They're going to be for video ideas. So plan just jotting down notes for videos that I want to make, but haven't actually added to the schedule yet. And they are also going to be for product ideas for the shop. So anytime I get an idea for a product, I will pop it in here. And then as I'm planning out my releases, I can pop back to these sheets to see what I have jotted down for ideas. In the end, it will look like this. So I have our tabs at the top, which will be labeled probably just like annual um, shop, YouTube and notes here. I'm gonna pull these out again because they are sticky at the top and I don't want them to get stuck on things. But I will be creating new ones and labeling them in the next couple of days. All right, let's put these aside. All right, so the last thing that I'm gonna do in this planner today is show you how I'm going to set up the monthlies. So one new product in my shop are these basic monthly calendars that give you your headers with the months already printed on them, your days of the week and your date dots, a couple flags, and then you can also get the matching labels to go with them. I have got a whole set of 12 here. I'm not going to um, make you sit through the entire thing, but I will pop down one spread just to show you what they look like um, and then I will do the rest off camera. So other than testing these out, this actually I think I want the month on this side. I don't know why, that's just usually how I do it. Um, I have not actually used these in my planner yet. I tested them out. I mean they're the same dimensions as my regular monthly ones, so I knew they would fit, but um, I tested one out in my budget planner for 2021, and that is it. I am using these in almost every planner I have this year, um, which is actually really exciting for me because it means that all of my monthlies are going to be fairly uniform. And I think, I honestly think that's important for me. In the only planner I think so far that I am planning to do like themed monthlies in is my B6 daily. 
um, and that'll be the like that'll be the only one that sort of isn't pre-planned as well. The rest of them will either be these colorful ones or the coordinating uh, black and white ones. So I'm just really excited about these monthlies. Dottie is now snoring under the desk, if you can hear that. Okay, there is what that looks like. I'm gonna pop this off so it's easier to get the date dots off. Grab a quick drink and some caffeine, and then we can start to plan. So January starts on a Saturday. That's what these look like. I am going to quickly lay down the rest of the months and then I'll show you what this planner looks like in the end. I'll be right back. All right, I am back. I got through to July in the monthlies and then I decided to pause that for now because we've got a lot of other planners to set up. So um, I am gonna show you what we have so far in here and then we're gonna move on to the next one. So we've got our frosted cover and the cover page on the inside. 2022 um, cover page in here. We have our annual overview as well as this one. I am sort of thinking that I may have preferred to do these two facing each other like if I'd done that one on this side and this one on that side it might have been more helpful I'm gonna sit on that and just decide if I want to reprint it that's the nice thing about these ones is that they're printable so I can change that around if I want to then we move into the monthlies I did realize that I wanted to put a 2022 <clears throat> um script up here so I'm gonna add that there and that is just whoops the just put it there that's one of the leftovers from the uh, neutral month header sheets that I had and then we move into January so I've just put the base down I haven't done any of the planning for these months uh, because obviously I need to put some thought into that I love the way that these colorful monthlies look as you can see I got very slanted for some reason in April there um, but fixed it up in May June and July I have not done August through December yet I'm going to do that later but other than that the only other setup that remains to be done is in my YouTube section which is to set up the grid for tracking my videos for each month here and then planning them out and that is it I've got my notes section at the back so I will add in um, the rest of the monthlies my tracker and then at some point I will create new tab dividers at the top for the sections but other than that these babies are done so that is my business planner for 2022 Okay, next up is my budget planner. I am not gonna do a full setup in this video and I'm actually gonna do things a little bit differently um, or what might seem a little bit backwards because I wanna show you how I use it. So I mentioned in my planner lineup video that I use this for my work finances and I mentioned that I use the Avalon and Ninth Functional Sub primarily in this planner. So the first thing I always use it for um, when it arrives is my budget planner to get the months set up and then tracking and then I use all of the leftovers of which there are always a million um, in other planners whenever I need a colored box or whatever. My January monthly sub has not arrived yet. I had not expected it to by the time um, I filmed this video. However, I have not set up my December budget yet. So I obviously have some catching up to do. That is in the discs version there are the rest of the small gray discs 
<laughs> good to know. Um, obviously has some catch up to do. This is the 20, second half of 2021 in here. What I'm going to do is go through the initial setup in this planner, the new one, to show you what it's going to look like. And then I'm going to show you how I set up a month in the current one, in the 2021 version. So I will use my December monthly sub for that and show you how it looks in here, which is how it's going to look in all of these months as well. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, the first thing we're going to do is we have some uh, tab stickers and some neutral month headers. We're going to do the same thing that we did in the um, last planner or my B6 rather. And then in this planner, I am going to be using the black and white monthlies. These are labeled 10E. It's not, it's 10D. I mix them up and need to fix them. Um, this is the A5 version of the basic monthlies. And I decided to go with the black and white because I went, because I use my monthly functional sub from Avalon and Ninth, I don't necessarily know, like, I don't know what the colors are going to be ahead of time, right? Um, and so this year I had been waiting until I knew and then I was creating a monthly that fit the color scheme, but I want to set this up in advance and get all of the months down so that I can just jump right in as soon as, um, the sub arrives each month. So I'm going to go with the black and white and then that way any color scheme will work. So let's pop on our tabs to start and I don't think I'll need to cut these ones down. I think, actually don't, yeah, I think they're probably closer to the size of the A5 wide tabs, if not the same. So January. I love this planner. Um, I actually think that I could use it for a number of different things. And I have thought about it. Um, I think it's one that I could use as a work planner. But I haven't got far enough into the setup to really figure out exactly how I would use it. Okay, so have our monthly tabs and then the month on the first page and then we're going to do our monthlies. So I just lost my slipper and my foot is freezing. Okay, I am hoping not to have to white out this entire thing. Oh, I just did it again. Will I see a lot of it through the sticker? You know what? I don't think it's so visible that I'm going to care. So I'm just going to stick this down. If it ends up that I feel like I can see too much of it, I will change it for February. So in my current year budget planner, the December one that we're going to plan together, I actually did use the colored version of the monthlies um, because I did, when I made them, I did know the colors of the December sub and I figured that they would go well enough with it. So the one that we're going to plan is actually the December green color, but going forward, they will all be black and white for, I was going to say color matching purposes, but I think I mean color neutral purposes. <laughs> Friday. This is one of those planners that, like, for all intents and purposes, should not be a really exciting one, but it's actually one of my favorites because when you get something like this set up and you start, you find a tracking system that works for you, it's exciting, honestly. <laughs> what day of the week does January start with again? It's a Saturday, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So that means, hold on, let me take this off again. 
that's a trick for date dots if they also annoy you while you're trying to put them down just pull the backing off and make the sheet as small as possible and then it's easy just to grab them so let's do this quickly So that is what each month is going to look like in here. Set those aside. And then I'm going to grab, actually there's more to set aside than this, my little trash pile. Put these back in a little sleeve to keep them safe until I am ready to do all of the rest of these, but this so simple monthly layout, which will work perfectly for my purposes. Let's swip, swip. That's a combination of switch and swap. We're going to swip to my 2021 version and plan out December. All right. So here is December. Use a bit of an oops sheet for this one. So the days are a little bit wonky, but that's fine. That's all we're using it for. I'm going to grab my monthly sub. The green is a little bit different, but it's not so different that it's going to matter. So the sheets I need for this are this one, this one, that, um, I think that that is it for the monthly. And then I'll show you how I use, well, actually I'll show you right now. So these I'll need for the monthly. Then I'll also need these two for my trackers. I'll show you where those go. And I will need the date covers as well. So generally what I do in this planner when I get the monthly sub is decide, I basically assign each week a color. So for December, actually kind of like these four here. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So what I do then is, is it just, I guess I actually need five, don't I? Yeah, so maybe we'll just go back to red. So we'll do these four and then this. Um, so what I do is each, week that I've assigned a color to, I'm going to match my monthly spread. Like any bills that are in the first week of December are going to be marked in that color. That just helps me know what all um, is like just matching up the dates. Right. And then I use, where is it? This. So what I do is I use the sticky notes to mark bills and I use um, the solid uh, headers to, I just use those to mark down, um, paydays and like incoming money. So for me, Etsy paydays are on a Tuesday. Technically, I think it's Monday. If you have an Etsy shop, you're probably saying, what are you talking about? Um, but like it's in the account on Tuesday. So that's the day that I count as payday. So one, two, three, so I only really need four. So those just go at the bottom of each Tuesday. Uh, they are longer than the box and that's okay. I'm gonna trim them all in a second when I'm done here. So I just place it with it sort of not all the way down. Then I'll grab my slicey tool and try to find metal ruler I use with it. Just gonna stick the cutting mat under here because um, this is the sharpest knife in the history of knives. And I have been known on many occasions to go through not just the sheet that I'm cutting over, but 
the ones under it too. I feel like with these knives, there's either it didn't cut through or it cut through 500 sheets. There's no middle grip. Okay, um, so what I have been doing uh, this year is just writing in Etsy. I'm going to make a little script this year just to put there so that I can write the amount next to it. Next, we're going to do our bills. Now, they are concentrated towards the beginning of the month, which is probably the same for a lot of people. I'm going to cap my knife because I am the person who would stab myself. Um, so I need these. There's one thing I need to check before I start because one of the things that came out at the beginning of the month is now probably going to come out at the end of the month and that is my fault. It's my Kobo subscription which is a work expense for many many reasons um, but it used to come out on the like second of the month and then I didn't update the postal code in the billing information when we moved and I updated it on my credit card so then it didn't process at the beginning of December and I didn't notice because I was too busy to read <laughs> so I didn't notice until the 23rd um, and now that is when it's going to go through which is fine it means one less thing up here so I said we're starting with the red so on the first there are two things so if there's only one I'll use the big post-it note if there are two um, then I will use the little ones and just layer them on a little bit so basically I just do this one and then we will have one on the second which now that I think about that one that one may have changed for the same reason but we're gonna hope that we got it right and then there's gonna be one on the fifth <clears throat> that there then on the eighth, what's our next color? Is just the regular green. Um, on the eighth, my Adobe subscription comes out. And on the eleventh, one of my instant ink subscriptions comes out. I have two printers, so there are two. And then we don't have anything until the 22nd. So now we're in the fourth week, which is gonna be the brown ones, right? One, two, three, four, yeah. It's the fifth one on this sheet, but we're going based on this color order here. So what did I say? The 22nd is Geek Squad on my laptop. The 23rd is going to be the Kobo. And then the 29th is my Shopify subscription, which it didn't. I don't, I think that one was the same thing. I forgot to update the postal code. I, I don't even have my Shopify site set up, but I had the subscription and the plan going because um, I had intended to have it up months ago. I'm gonna leave this one off for now because I have a feeling that that didn't process at all in December. Cause I, I would have got the email today for it and I didn't, so. I'm guessing that one didn't go through, but normally that would be there. So, or this here. So it will be there whatever day I get that set up again. So that is the monthly spread. This is how I use this. So it's just the sort of auto pay bills that come out. Any other income that comes in, like miscellaneous income, still gets marked down with um, a header. I'll just choose a different color and it doesn't really matter which color I choose. 
then what I do is flip to here. This, I do this very similarly to the way that um, Caitlin did hers. Um, so you can also check hers out if you want to see like the full setup, but it's sort of the same, uh, same idea. So on these pages, I start with the date covers. Nope, December 1st was probably not a Monday. It was a Wednesday. So I pop a date cover at the top here. Then I grab somewhere I have a ton of date dots. Hold on. So oh. it's just these that I use or have been using. Um, my kiss cut date covers from my shop. I don't think here, yeah, but I don't know where that sheet is, but that's okay. We will start a new one. So I take December 1st and just pop that there. And then I use a combination of these, these ones, if I run out of these ones in a certain color and these here. So I can't add any of these yet because I actually need to double check what came out on December 1st, but essentially like there is one thing I can add. So I know that, or two things rather. So if we look at December 1st, we mark down two things that were gonna come out. I mark them in here as well, just to confirm that they did come out. So the first thing, and that's what I use these for. The first thing is um, my uh, membership for Caitlin's YouTube channel. And the second is my fontbundles.com subscription. So those get put there. And then under here, I will put, but I bought anything the 1st of December. I might have. Um, I mean, I probably did. If not, I can probably pull this up. Then, so for any purchases that I made that are work-related, I pop that in here. I write what it was for and the amount. And then in here, I write the, the category, like the expense category. When I'm done a day, I just pop the next date cover down and go. I have somewhere a no spend sticker. If there's a day where there are no expenses, I put no spend and that just helps me track because when I'm going through them at the end of the year to double check, sometimes I'm like, okay, but what, like, I don't want to skip a date cover and then just get mixed up. You know, if I go from Wednesday to Saturday because Thursday and Friday, I had no expenses. So I'll put the date cover and then put a no spend. It's also because like at the end of this, you know, if I did Wednesday and then Saturday, I'm not going to use Thursday and Friday, like random date covers for something, right? So I might as well pop them all in here and have a complete month. At the end of the month, so there's, I think, five pages for this. I never use all five, like maybe three. There are these pages here. This is where I am going to use, I believe, the, I'm going to tally up my totals for each category. So the categories that I write in here, I think there are seven that my accountant told me about this past year. So eight total boxes is perfect. Maybe I'll have one for income and then seven for the expense categories and total them up so that at the end of the year, I can, um, quickly have the totals and know what I need to give her. I can also make notes here about things that are capital expenses, which are anything that need to be like depreciated over several years and can't all be written off in one year. So that is how I will be doing my work budget for 2022 as well as soon as my January sub arrives which is going to be a few days after the new year and that's okay um I will just keep note of things until then it will get set up the exact same way with the January colors which I'm so excited about in the new planner and I will continue tracking the way that I have been Okay, next up is my daily with journaling memory keeping planner. So there's a fair bit to set up in here as well. And we will just jump right in. I mentioned in my 
planner lineup video, I'm just going to add the tabs while I'm talking that, uh, a couple things. This is an, un sorry, it's not undated. It's a, an outdated planner, but it was a glitch or like, out I don't actually think there was a glitch with this one. I think it was just outdated. So it's dated July to December, 2021. I am totally fine redating it, especially because I got a really good deal on it because it was outdated. It's also a good one for me to sort of give memory keeping one last try. Sorry, give daily memory keeping another try. I tried it for the second half of this year. I did a weekly spread for the first half, which I loved. I, I did end up a few times with a few weeks to catch up on when life got busy, but that's okay. Um, I really wanted to stick with it and I enjoyed it while I did daily planning, but life just got so busy. And I think it took me a while to find my groove in terms of what to mark down, like having the sidebar and the hourly section sometimes felt a little bit redundant. And it took me a while to figure out what should go where. I also, and I was in a B6 planner, so moving to an A5 wide is, is a little scary. <laughs> but there were a couple things about an A5 wide that I actually thought might be easier for me. One of them is the journaling section is much bigger. So it's harder in a B6, which is tiny, you know, it's like this big comparatively to get all your journaling in as well as all of the deco that you want to do for it. Um, in an <clears throat> A5 wide, that's obviously a lot easier. It also, um, I like to journal, so it may work really well that I have more journaling space and I may actually come to this planner more naturally at the end of every day. The other thing I decided to do was create sort of a standard sticker for each day that I could track different things. And I have, I've printed them, I have not cut them, but, or have I printed them? It's basically, maybe I didn't, it's basically like a daily recap. Um, so it's, you know, what was the weather like? Um, what time did I get up? Did I do my AM routine? Did I do my PM routine? That kind of thing. So I can go back after the fact and fill those in if I want to. I bought a ton of printable little uh, weather icon stickers. Um, and I'm hoping that that will make it easier and a little bit more streamlined for me to be able to fill in things each day. Before we get to that, we have some work to do. So the first thing is that we need to do something with this page. This is another copy of the Scribble Sticker Co. Medi monthly calendars. Um, they're going to be way too small for here. So I did create some that I think are going to fit a little bit better. I don't love the design I ended up with, but I did them quickly. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be fine for this planner. If I continue in a daily planner past June of this year, I will um, redo them for the second half because the next planner will come with the same months. However, if I continue, I'm just looking for my whiteout. If I continue in a daily planner like this, I will probably get an undated one just to make it a little bit easier. Where the heck is my whiteout? Oh, it's on my desk. But it's behind my light. <laughs> Where else would it be? So the first thing I'm going to do is just white out this 2022. And I've printed a new one. Sorry, that I'm whiting out 2021 to add in 2022. Oopsie. Okay. And then I think think I'm going to have to white out the calendar. I'm going to leave. Oh, I can't leave the month. No, that's fine. The month is on there. Um, so probably have to white out the whole thing. Let's see. I'm pretty sure that this is just going to show through too much. I mean, it's actually not bad, but I think I'll like it more if I do. So let me just stick 
off to one side and start waiting out. The white out job doesn't have to be perfect. And I knew that I was gonna end up using quite a lot of white out during this planner setup video. So I think that'll be enough. Let me put one down and then we'll see. And it should fit pretty perfectly in here. I'm gonna turn it upside down to lay it down. Okay. Yeah, that is gonna be fine. Next up is this page, which we're gonna use this one for these um, date monthly neutral headers again. We won't need to cut them down. I think they will all fit, but I will need more whiteouts. So let me grab some of that quickly. Okay, so let's finish this whiteout. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. These will need to be completely whited out, I think. or more completely. There we go, done. New one, a new, oh, hold on, this is wonky, there we go. A new Tombow Whiteout is so satisfying. we have our monthly tabs so I've got another set of these that I'm going to use the same way that I have in all of the other penny pages planners in fact I think these are in every planner except my business one um, and as we go I'm also going to replace this with the right month as well so I don't know why I chose to do this one in the same font as the planner, but I did. <laughs> so we'll just pop that there. And it can cover the squiggle a little bit. That's fine with me. Uh, and so setting this up, like I said, you know, committing to planners is not always my strong suit. But again, setting this up as much as possible ahead of time, I'm hoping will help me want to use it because if I am redating a whole planner and putting in that effort then I'm hoping that I will um, want to use it and not let it go to waste. I'm sure that I could re-redate a planner but let's not get carried away. <laughs> Okay, March, and then I figured with this one, because I got such a good deal on it, um, that if I didn't end up using it and I failed at daily memory keeping, it wasn't a huge loss even if it is now going to be like redated and set up for the full six months. So tell me in the comments what kind of setup you do for your planners ahead of time for a new year or a new like half year or whatever it is however often you refresh your planners. Do you do a full extensive wait a minute Nope, nope. 
Uh, do you do a full extensive setup? Do you um, just go, do you buy planners that are completely set up for you already so you don't have to do this? What's your style for setting up new planners? Do you enjoy this process? Like I find, a, I get a lot of satisfaction out of doing this um, and getting them all set up. And I feel like it is a good investment of my time. Plus it's fun to play with the stickers. Um, but for sure, uh, I know that there are people who probably don't have the time, inclination, uh, et cetera, for interest um, in doing this kind of setup. And I think, you know, whatever works for each person, right? But I would love to know what your style is. One thing I may do, like I was saying, I wish that I could have like a combination, a hybrid sort of thing. One thing I may do is look for, like watch for another glitch sale and pick up um, a weekly, whoops, vertical weekly glitch planner and then Frank and plan it together. I did I have uncoiled one planner in my life now um I I don't love the way that I recoiled it like how it ended up but it's fine um for what it is and um I think I could do it again and sort of coil in some more pages all right for the monthlies I am using these basic black and white monthlies um the reason for that is that I never know what to do in my monthly memory keeping planners, um, especially a daily one where you're already putting so much detail in. Um, it's hard to know what exactly to put in the monthlies. I'm not going to do all of them. I'm going to do one to show you what it looks like in this planner. Uh, I have decided that what I am going to use it for is the monthly remix that's becoming popular until recently and sort of even now, but I'm getting, getting there. I didn't even have enough like funny character stickers or scripts or things like that to really be able to do one of these. Um, I do now. So, um, and I'm growing my collection, so I think I can do it. Um, I had attempted to do it the first month in my previous daily with journaling, the B6 one, but, um, I was going to have to like print, <clears throat> um, like create the scripts or sayings or quotes or whatever, uh, for every day. So I had like kept notes on all of them, but then I just didn't get around to doing it. Now I think I have enough of them that I could do most of the month um, just from my sticker stash. And if there are a few that I need to create, then I can do that probably pretty easily. I guess that was actually, it wasn't even my daily with journaling. It was my weekly memory keeper um, from the first half of the year. Sorry if you can hear loud talking it's probably muffled but you can probably hear it i think that's my upstairs neighbor all right now what i'm not sure about is if i'm gonna need to white out the dates i think i'm going to but let's see oh you know what it might actually just cover it it might need to be whited out down but the first is a saturday I might need to be whited out on the ones where there's like double digits, but you know what? Possibly even not them. Um, this one that I will need to white out. All right, let me, I don't know why dating these upside down it seems so much easier to me. Uh, so also tell me if you do a monthly remix and what kinds of things you write in it. Do you use stickers? Do you just do like a little saying for what happened each day? Like what do you, do you jot down a whole bunch of, um, 
notes about the day, like another journaling spot, how do you use them? Tell me, and then tell me also where you get your favorite stickers for your monthly remix, because I probably need to get a whole bunch more. Okay, so that is what the monthly is gonna look like just with the base. I figured I would stick with the neutral, like basic black and white, because um, that way if I add in any colored stickers on each of the days, um, it won't clash at all. And also like most of my quote stickers and um, things like that are black and white anyway. So it'll all just match up nicely and I can also pre-plan it ahead of time which I am planning to do with the rest of these here but not in this video. The last thing that we're going to do in this planner is redate the days. So I am going to need white out for this and on every day because the date stickers that I made um, are shorter and like they're not as tall or long as, or wide rather, as the date, the dates here. Um, again, I don't love, I don't love the way this looks. I love this font for a million other things. I don't know that I love it for this planner, um, but I found the font that I do like right when I was done making these. So I thought I would use them for this month because they were printed and cut already and then for uh, February I will make them in the new font. So one of the things I'm going to have to do in this planner, uh, it won't be a problem in January and it won't be a problem in February but it will be I believe in March is that some of the months because it's a planner I'm redating and the dated planners come with the exact whoops right number of days is that some of the months won't have enough days in them. July has 31 days, so does January, so that's fine. Um, August has 31 days and February only has 28, so that's fine. I'll have more than enough. September has 30, but March, which will be in September in this planner, has 31. So I will have to add some sheets in. I ordered <clears throat> a set of these inserts from the penny pages. They're on their way here. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to use like the sheets from just, you know, grab a sheet from that uh, pack to add into March or if I will because each of those, I, I ordered undated ones. So they'll come with 30, 30, what was I say 38, 31 sheets per month. Um, the other thing that I can do and may do is take one of the sheets from what would be February in this planner, snip it at the coils and add it in at the end of March. Um, the only thing I have to check for that is that I think it will probably add in two extra days. And that's not what I need, but I don't know that there's a way around that. So I'll have to see in, I might look at it in a moment. Let me add these in for the rest of January to get me going. 
and then I'll come back and we'll look at that together. All right, I've dated all of January in here, and I'm just looking at the issue for March. So in what would have been August, I only need 28 because it'll be February in here. Then I've got, so I'll have this extra one, which I won't need, and then, which is fine, can stay there. And then this one, which I can snip out, and I can put it here and glue it to this one so that the 31st is here. So that's fine for March slash what would have been September. April is going to be the same issue because, no, this would have been October. Oh, but it, I won't actually have an extra in April because it's on the back of this one. So I can't take one from here to put in May. And I think the same thing is true for December, which will be my June. So June 30th will end here. And I can't take that one. So I will need to grab one sheet from the uh, inserts I have coming and glue it in here, which will be fine because I should have plenty of those. So it's November, which will be my May that I'll need to add a sheet in. So that's not, that's not the end of the world. All right. So if we flip back to the beginning of this one, we have the cover, then we have our newly reformatted 2022 calendar. If we flip, we've got our whatever we're going to use this for. I have no idea yet. And then if we flip again, we have January, replaced that with the right month. And then we've done our monthly spread for January for the remix. So, and then of course, all of our redated January pages. So I'm going to stop there with this planner and I will do February to June for the monthlies off camera. They're going to look the exact same as this, except for the months will change. All right. We have one more planner to go. And it is my Avalon and Ninth 7 by 9 vertical weekly planner. See, this is where I recoiled it and it's not really behaving. I guess this is where I recoiled it. Anyway, it's fine. Okay, I am excited about this one for a number of reasons. One of the biggest ones is how I'm going to do the monthlies in this planner. So I'm going to show you, we're going to do one full monthly plan with me together in this one uh, because I want to show you how I'm using it. But first, we're going to do our usual setup. So I printed um, month stickers for the tabs. I also have these, which we will use again in... Uh, the monthlies as well. I haven't, I don't usually put my name in planners. I don't really know why, but I just never have. These planners did come with tab stickers, um, but mine were um, miscut. And honestly, I knew that I could create my own. So I didn't bug um, Amanda from Avalon and Ninth for new ones because I knew it would be easy enough for me to do this. So we will pop all of these on. I think I could have done them a little bit smaller, I think. In fact, I'm not 100% sure that September is going to fit. It should. I measured them, but who knows? Ah, can't pick up my sticker. Uh, I think this size will be fine. I decided it was okay if 
I couldn't see the whole month when the planners closed um, because if you can see part of the month, you probably know what the rest of it is. June. As soon as I like recoiled this planner, I kind of wished I had bought, at the time I bought this, the unpunched inserts weren't available for it. And I, when I started using it, I kind of wished that I had ordered those just because planning on discs is a lot easier. You don't have the problem of recoiling something that then never lays down properly again. <laughs> I don't know what I did. Um, oh yeah, this is fine. But I'm just going to try to stick with it. The planners that I end up liking the most at the end of the year are usually the coiled ones because they're so like permanent, right? With disc ones, and it, I think that's it's less of a problem now because I've sort of found a solution for it. But with disc ones, it would usually get to a point in a subsequent year where I would want my like whatever discs the planner was on I would want to use those discs for another planner um so then I'd end up pulling them all off the discs and then leaving the inserts like free I sort of fixed that actually I can show you by ordering <laughs> a giant bag of plastic discs so I like metal discs for the planners I'm using but for, you know, putting them on the shelf afterwards, plastic is fine. So I ordered the biggest ones that I could find because obviously the planners grow. They're not as big as the, oh yeah, that's going to be fine. I can tell what month that is. Uh, they're not as big as like the Happy Planner um, expander discs, but they're big enough. Okay. These I'm going to use just here. And I don't know yet what I'm going to, whoops, use this page for, um, really, other than just random notes, which is, okay, we're just going to put that down and we'll try to do better with February. <laughs> um, other than random notes, which is probably what it will end up being, but um, I did want to label them just so I know where, which sheet I'm on. There, that's a bit better. Oops. So I'm going to do the whole year again. I have been tempted, uh, Amanda's shop is closed right now, but I have been tempted when it reopens to purchase like I thought about not doing the setup in this planner at all and then purchasing disc insert or unpunched inserts um, and doing them on discs instead because like of all the planner paper, this is my absolute favorite. It's so forgiving. I move stickers like literally weeks after the fact and um, you know, you can't even tell. I use my like, palette knife, not just my tweezers, but I don't need undo or anything like that in this planner. It's also the one I find that scuffs the least. So there's something about this type of paper. It's the nicest to write on. Like you want, you don't want fully smooth paper most of the time. Um, in your planner, you want something with a little bit of grit. Um, but the problem is that it does sort of scuff up a little bit or you can end up with like residue, which some of that you can get off with um, an eraser, but uh, it's just nicer and the pages look cleaner if that doesn't happen. Also, it's nice if you put your stickers down straight. See, even that just pulled up so perfectly so yeah um i do find that the like i like the uh penny pages 
paper, but I do find that it scuffs more easily than this one does. <gasps> I ripped it again. God, I just get so eager to get them down there. That actually went down fine. Um, I mean, I've been doing what feels like 17 hours of um, planner set up today, which I am not complaining. It might be when it comes time to edit this, but for now, oops, I am not complaining. A December. Okay. So, go back to the end. Uh, in my, well, in several videos, um, I have explained that I took the extra sheets, because this is an undated planner, you get extra sheets, um, out and moved them to the beginning of the planner so I could use them in December before it actually started. So that's what those are. They'll just stay there. I don't need a tab for that. I'll know what it is. Then we have... <laughs> January. Um, I decided not to label the tab here because there isn't really, it's, it's just plain black um, on the Penny Pages ones where it's a design. I thought it looked a little empty without it, but I think this is fine. Um, and then my screw sticker here, and then we'll move into the monthlies and then same for each month like that. So what I am doing for the monthlies, let me clean this up. I have so many 2022s here. I will find uses for them. Or if you need some 2022 stickers, let me know and I'll send them to you. Okay. What I'm doing for the monthlies is that this is going to be my plan ahead planner for monthlies. So in my B6 hybrid, which is the one that I'm in like all day, every day, the monthlies for that will be set up like I have been doing monthlies up until now, which is basically just right before the month starts, I will do my monthly setup. I'm still going to do that because I want to use some of the, you know, themed monthly kits that I will create over the course of the year. Um, most of the information that will go into that spread will be from this planner here. And this is where I'm going to put down like plan ahead, all of what are the birthdays, what are the school important days, all of that stuff. And to do that, I spent a lot of time, a lot of time creating scripts for it. So I have things like, so, okay, first of all, I'm using the colored monthlies in this planner. Um, so this is, um, new so 10B previously in my shop was the Erin Condren 2021 layout, like 2020 to 2021 layout. Um, I don't do that layout anymore because 2021 is over, those planners are outdated. I'm not going to keep making, I know people redate planners, but I just I can't keep making monthlies for planners that really don't exist and can't be bought anymore. 10B going forward is going to be specifically for this planner. So it was possible before to sort of make my monthlies fit in this planner. Now they will be specifically for it. So same as all of the other basic monthlies, but specifically for this planner here. So I'm going to use those. And I'm also going to use the labels. I did also just create last night the washi to match these basic monthlies, um, which will go up in the shop at some point. I didn't do the glitter for these and I, I don't think I will, um, just because this is so much like more manageable to print and cut and pack. But if you're dying for washi, like glitter washi in these colors, let me know. Okay. Script wise, I have printed a whole, whole lot of scripts. So I have a payday every week from Etsy. My husband gets paid every other week, so there are a whole lot of payday stickers. We have house church stickers, which I only printed until I think around the middle of the year because then we take a break and who knows if we'll start up like on the same two week pattern afterwards. I have TPC stickers, bill dues, vacation, shop clothes, big old life, IG loop. <laughs> I have been terrible the last two months with remembering to do the IG loop, even though it's in 14 planners. 
um, all of these things. I don't know for sure that I'll be in TPC every month. Obviously, I have to apply like every other shop does or uh, most other shops. Um, but uh, I'm going to mark TPC anyway, because even if I'm not in as a shop, I will probably shop the sale as a customer. So I have these. Then for each month, I have one of these as well with scripts specific to that month. So I've got little soccer balls for each soccer game. I have birthdays, New Year's Day, um, and this is a death anniversary. I've got, I don't know why I put house church in here as well. I don't think I did it in all of the months in the end. I think I was going to and, I, and then I changed my mind. PD days, which is professional development. That means my daughter doesn't have school um, and appointments. I've got one of these for every month of the year through to December. So I am going to pre-plan the whole year. <laughs> I'm going to use scripts for everything that I know in advance, and then I will add in pen for things that pop up after the fact. I am not going to make you watch in real time as I do each of these, um, but I am going to walk through January with you because I thought that might be fun. And then I think I'm going to continue filming for the rest of the months. That's Dottie snoring under the desk. Um, but I will way, way speed it up and not make you again sit through it in real time. Also, my fingers are gonna be raw from sticker glue sticking to them after this process is done. Okay, the sizing is a little wonky and I don't know how I did that because I measured it about 300 times. I think it's because, oh, I'm ripping. I think it's because I measure everything in centimeters to get it exact and then I convert and sometimes it ends up being off by like a tiny, tiny amount. So I will fix those before they go in the store because they're not actually in the store yet. That went down a little too far down, but that's okay. Let's do our um, days of the week. So this is the first planner I have used in years that had the sidebar on the left, which is fine. I don't mind it. Um, I just got to get used to it again, that it's only going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on this side. I think happy planners are still like that, right? Um, but all of the other like A5 wide and EC and all of those. Um, I think are on the right. And then we already determined that the first one, let's take this off as usual. Are you tired of watching me put date dots down in the calendars? Um, I will skip this part for you and come back when it's dated. All right, I'm back with the base down. So I'm gonna start with my um, scripts and all the events. I'm gonna do these ones last. Well, there are a few things I'm gonna put down like paydays and things like that first because they always go down first for me. And then I guess we'll do a little bit of a mix and match um, for those. So for paydays, I always use these um, stickers at the, like that go, they fit between the date dot and the box. That's what I'm trying to say, but failing. Um, and I just realized that I think it'll be fine for January. Um, but for some months, 
we will end up with nine paydays because I get paid every day, uh, sorry, every week from Etsy and there are two months of the year where my husband has three pays. So for those, um, I will need to print two, like one more each of those. Even as I do this, it seems like a large box to be, like to do a, I'm sort of feeling like I don't actually need a box for these. I do them in my B6 planner because obviously the boxes are a lot smaller so the scripts fit them better. I could have done the scripts a little bit bigger in this one, but I think I'm actually not going to use these for paydays. And that'll just leave these boxes for maybe some other events that I will want to mark down. Um, so I will just pop my payday stickers here instead. Like I'll use one of those boxes for things like New Year's Day. Um, and possibly some birthdays that like if it's on a day where I have other stuff going on. Okay, my husband's pays in January are the 7th. And 21st. Okay. I'm going to rearrange myself one moment. All right, so let's mark things like holidays. So we'll mark New Year's Day. Where's my January? Here it is. Nope, that's February. Here's January. I said we'll use these for things like New Year's Day. This might even be longer than the sticker. Nope, it's perfect. Okay. So pop that in there. And then we have a bill that's due on this day. Um, I've mentioned in my monthly spreads before, we only have two bills that are not auto pay. So I just mark those there and then I write in what it's for and just check it off when it is paid. This is an appointment label, but it works just fine for this. Let's mark down the rest of the birthdays and like anniversary things before we move on because I think that will sort of dictate. So one on the ninth, and that is my friend Joanna's. Okay. One on the, so I have something to mark on the 20th and 21st. Oh, one of them would go, it's okay, it'll go under it. So on the 20th is um, the anniversary of my grandfather's passing. So we'll mark that. Yeah, scuffed my stickers a little bit. He died 12 years ago. Oops. Oops, that's fine. Then the 21st is both my cousin Nick and my daughter's mom's birthday. So we'll use, since we're, it won't, like we won't be able to put a box there, we'll use one of these to pop that down mostly straight. Okay, the 25th is my mother-in-law's birthday. They don't, um, they don't celebrate because um, they're Jehovah's Witnesses, but I, like it took me until this year to even know when her, 
her date of birth was. So I will mark it down just so that I remember it. And then what day? Oh my God, I'm in 2023. I don't know how I managed that. So the 20... First is also a PD day for her. So let's put that there. That's the no school day. And when is her, her doctor's appointment is the 26th. So when you use, oops. And I've those and I even like printed the time on here. 840 and that is a phone appointment which is amazing and I hope it always is because these appointments like this specific one is literally three minutes from the time he calls till the time like he's transferred us back to his secretary to um rebook the next appointment and that has been done like that's how fast they are it's terrific okay um we also have a bill on the 15th um i know i'm going all over the place but that is what happens all the time in my monthly spreads and the other thing that i will want to mark down is Chloe's schedule. So she switches on Sundays and I just mark them with dots and then um, scripts which are here. I really need to organize my here, my script stickers and I will definitely need to print more of these because I did not print these in the same font because um, I knew I had these. So I just mark um, C home for Chloe home and then C to Ease, which is Elisa, and that's her mom. Um, we, I don't think the kids are going to be going back to school in person in January. It won't affect Chloe because she's doing distance learning anyway, um, but it will impact her if her step siblings are all also doing school from home. Um, that's a lot of like extra noise for her if. Um, oh, hold on. I got a, I forgot that I need to mark TPC, which is going to go under that. So let me just, I put down washi usually for TPC to mark that it's the whole weekend. Um, so I'll put the Chloe schedule above that, but while I'm thinking about it, let me do the washi for TPC. Um, yeah, so her schedule may end up changing a little bit if that's the case, because it will probably be a little overwhelming for her to do school there. Um, and she may end up just spending a little bit more time here during that time period. We'll see. there whoops and till Monday oops we only need a tiny bit of this one Really leave an 
enough space for that. That's okay. So then what I do is on the day it starts, I just put TPC with an arrow right there. Okay. Now, what did I do with here? Now we'll add that back in on top. Okay. So far, so good. I think that looks really nice and very streamlined. I'm happy with that. The next thing that I'm going to mark is what I have house church I have big old life which I have stickers for as well I have IG loop which already started in December this month so I don't need to put that down so let's put down big old live which will be here We have not scheduled any of our vacation for 2022 yet, so I don't need any of the vacation stickers, but um, I think my husband may be hoping to take some time off in January. It's usually a decent-ish time for him because um, the Christmas rush is done and uh, things really slow down at work for him. So house church, we didn't actually do house church the second half of this year. Um, but we are doing it starting again in January. I have mentioned recently, I have not actually attended church in several years, but um, this house church is run by friends of mine and it's just not your typical house church and I love it for that. Um, and I very much enjoy it. It's uh, been really interesting because we obviously moved it virtually. Um, I'm just putting these down, by the way. I'm not even marking like the time on this. This is just to show that there is a soccer game that day. Um, I will get more specific um, in my B6 monthly. One on the 15th. The last one is on the 22nd. I wonder if I should move these next to the date. Just there instead. Maybe that's cuter. Probably notice it more too. Um, yeah, we moved it virtual, virtual to uh, when the pandemic started. Um, I had actually attended virtually one time before that because um, it was when I was really, really sick last year, lost my voice, couldn't attend, but they were doing a session that I really wanted to attend. Um, so my friend uh, who hosts it, um, or was at her house at the time, um, WhatsApped me into it so, um, so that I could participate. So that was awesome. And then we all just moved to Zoom and that works great too. At some point, I imagine it'll go back to in-person. And at that point, I'm not 100% sure that I'll be able to attend regularly because um, we only have one car and my husband works usually till seven. But we will, we will see. Okay. Other than one other doctor's appointment for my husband that I just saw, um, that he put in the calendar for this day. Maybe I'll add the appointment label for it. And this is the kind of thing that I will like add in by pen afterwards. I believe that this is it for like January pre-plan. 
my husband only knows his schedule a week in advance so we can't like add that in ahead of time um so this is basically what the months will look like um you know as we go forward but obviously you know we're almost in january so i know most of these things um you know come april i'm guessing there will be a lot of pen added to it um as stuff has popped up over the months so i am going to put the bases down off camera so you don't have to watch me do that and then i'm going to turn the camera back on but i'm going to speed through at least at least part of the monthly setup so you can see how they end up looking at some point i'll pop back on here either when they're done or when i am raw fingered and have no fingerprints left from laying stickers down and we will touch base again i will be right back with some music and some sped up planning for you
stopped after June for now because I'm exhausted it is so I started this whole setup process of all the planners not just this one at 11 30 or so um, and it is now almost six o'clock and I've been working on this since then with a brief break around two um, and by brief I mean 20 minutes max I haven't eaten anything <laughs> So I'm hungry. I'm tired. Uh, I love the way this is coming together. I just needed to take a quick break and I think I'll work on the rest of the months in here tonight and then over the course of the next few days get the rest of the months in the other planner set up um, because it's just going to take me some time. So wanted to show you what the months look like in this planner. So we did January together. Um, I love, I love it. I love it. I love the way they all look. Um, February here. So we have the pink. Then we've got March here. Um, you may have noticed during the sped up version that I am a little bit all over the place in monthly setups it's just the way I don't know why it just I move back and forth um between the weeks and the days it just seems to work for me so there's Mar March here's April love it we have May and then we have June so I really love the simplicity of having sort of one color in different tones um, and then a different color for each month. I think that really adds something nice but uniform to the planner and I really really like the way that that's looking. So I'm happy with the way that it's turning out. I obviously underestimated how much time it was going to take to do all of these planners. <laughs> um, it's a lot of monthly spreads. I really, really wanted to commit to pre-planning a lot of the monthly spreads in my various planners because I need to be able to plan ahead in them. And I'm still committed to that. Like, I love the way that they're turning out. Um, I just need to spend a lot more time than I originally allotted to do it, which is fine. I'm enjoying it. I'm just tired and hungry now. So I'm going to end my 2022 planner setup video here. I think I'll be able to condense it all into one video, but who knows? It may end up in two parts because I really have no idea how much footage I have total and how much of it will end up being condensed into like 500 times sped up. In any case, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future videos, and check us out over on Instagram, Etsy, and Facebook at A Pretty Planscape. I will see you all again soon. Bye, friends.